You know what's funny? When one of the founding members of Planet Eclipse asks for my opinion on the MG100. Brings a tear to my eye. So this is my initial impressions of the Planet Eclipse MG100. The MG100 is Planet Eclipse's premier entry into the Magved world of paintball. Something I know myself, uh, a few members of my team, and I'm sure a lot of you have been praying for, have been imagining, have been trying to make yourself out of uh, various other Planet Eclipse markers with Magved adapters on and Tipex adapters and all that kind of fact. Don't need to do any of that anymore, because look at it, look at it. Lovely. Now before I go any further, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there. This video is not sponsored. I'm not paid to say any of this. I'm not financially rewarded for saying anything. I'm completely unbiased, um, other than being uh, a fan of Planet Eclipse, because obviously you know, you've seen on my own videos that I've gone through uh, the original Ether and I've had a Geo 3.5. So now that's out of the way. We can get on with it on a level playing field. You'll know that what I'm saying is my opinion. Good stuff. So to start off with, I got a bit of video footage for you from a little test I decided to do that I was a bit interested in is, is the chrono efficiency below 1000 PSI on my tank because I know that a lot of players will be running this on larger tanks, not just the small 13 CI tanks and it's quite interesting to, you know, when your tank does get low, is there a drop-off point? I hadn't used the MG100 prior to doing this test in a game. Now, so that was the quick chrono shots. Now, if you'll listen, I'll have some snippets. So I'll have the TMC sound here. And I'll have the MG100 sound here. Yeah, that too. And for good measure, We'll put the PPQ sound here. You know, it's not that interesting, I guess. But, you know, that was something I wanted to know because I, I, I definitely felt that, you know, I've been using this MG100 for about two months now and I definitely think it's super quiet. It's, it's really, really, if you'd watched my last gameplay video, Oh, 
you'd notice I did make a comment on that, that how quiet it is, and it, it, it just feels... So let's get on to some pros and cons of the MG100, okay? So here it is. Obviously, it will come with uh, the slightly extended front part of the, of the EMC kit, which I have just not put on for this video. But you can see it in other parts. It's fine. It's fine. It's all good. So first thing you'll notice is the look. Now, the look of this... Now, I've been talking to a lot of players across the last couple of events that I've been to, and the general consensus on this, I'm gonna go down because it's a bit wavy around. The general consensus of it is that it's kind of split halfway, especially with Magfeders. You've got the, I don't know, Mills, Becky, type, Rambo type players, you know, I'm not saying it's a negative, but players that like their kits to look like the real deal. Generally, they're saying that this is looking a little bit on the futuristic side and um, that they prefer it to look a bit more like uh, like a kind of an AR-15 style kind of platform. I, on the other hand, personal opinion, I think it looks great. I think it looks futuristic and I like the fact that it looks futuristic. It's just, oh, it's just, oh, yeah, it's lovely. I mean, if you've seen my previous videos as well, which I shall link below, on my previous EMC kit, Margos, I've actually installed lights in here to make it look extra futuristic so you know for me that's a pro for some people it will be a con efficiency on the chrono test on the first chrono test it didn't seem as efficient as i thought it was going to be uh, in real life gaming tests uh, and chronoing on the field on the day uh, it was much more it was like plus or minus five in velocity and it seemed to kind of where i was aiming these these balls they were going where I wanted to aim them and I didn't see much drop off at all when my tank was getting low so uh, efficiency is ding ding a build quality you'll see in the next little segments that I took apart this marker for cleaning and you know you can see all the different bits there's, there's, there's really not that much to this at all so you've just got the EMC kit you've got the the trigger grip you've got the magwell and then you just got this little the little tube in the belt and that is it and it's just so it looks kind of complicated but it's not it's just it's just super kind of simple really one kind of thing i would say is that there's a lot of screws on the emc kit so if you do get shot in the emc kit you're going to be you know having to strip the whole thing back it's not going to be as simple as just running a squeegee through the barrel and through the bolt the other thing is is you unlike if you had a Geo 3.5 or an Ether or something like that, you can't access the bolt without an Allen key. Um, so to access the bolt, you kind of, you remove that bit there and uh, you stick the Allen key in there like that. Uh, you turn, turn around, then the bolt will come out. So you, you still need the Allen key with you if you want to access your bolt on the field it's not a big deal it's a pretty big island key so you're not going to lose it that easily but it's just something to be aware of and obviously if you do have a stock on this then that's pretty much your stuff until you take the stock off pretty much it's just it's just all around a lovely bit of kit to clean really accuracy it's kind of like a funny subject to me because the first day of playing with it at ragnarok i found that I was missing shots that I really thought I was going to. Um, I wasn't using the stock barrel, I was using a 681 tighter barrel. But I don't know, I felt like I was missing shot, shots that I really should have connected with people at not that big of a range. But as the day progressed, and as I went into the Sunday, and as I went to my next event, I think it was, it was down to being comfortable with firing the marker. It was down to knowing the feel of the marker. Obviously this has almost zero kick so I think it, it was just getting used to it my first event I was very on the fence in terms of accuracy second event oh I was getting some very tidy headshots literally hitting targets within the second shot without first strikes bringing up the first strikes I did fire a mag okay now I'm not a big first strike player myself but I did fire a mag through this with first strikes, I gotta be honest, with the stop barrel, I hit the target once. Once. Now that could be just because I'm not used to aiming 
with this, with first strikes, or it could just be that I suck with first strikes, or, you know, I think if you're firing first strikes, I think you need a scope. I think if you're, if you're using it like this, like a speedball gun, I think it suits round ball better. Should I buy one of these? I would use it for first strike, but only if I had first strike spare. I think I wouldn't go out of my way. I think it performs so well with round ball. I don't think it needs first strikes. It's good. It's great to have the compatibility to have first strikes. And if I, if you've got a scope and a rifled barrel, you'd be flying. But stock, out the box, good to have a play with, but really, really expensive compared to round ball, compared to how much you're going to be firing uh, out of this thing. Just something to keep in mind. Ooh, the magazine. Onto the magazine now. The magazine. Die down magazine with uh, Planet Eclipse followers, the little green, the little green thingamajiggies. Like that. Just pop that over there. Pop that up there. Like that. Now, I don't know if this was a dam feature or, you know, I'd never, I'd never played with the dam. To be honest, I'd never held a dam mag before this point. One thing that's super, super impressive on this is that when you fire your last ball in this mag before you flip it, that comes into the breech. Bolt comes down, pow, stops. Does not make a big loud bang, letting everyone know on the field that you are out of paint. It just goes click, and then you need to switch the mag over. It is such an ingenious idea. Don't know whose idea it was. If it was your idea, you were a genius. But this idea was great. The mags feel great. They fit great. It's proper proper in there take them out ah now initially when i used the mag release i was a bit disappointed there because i thought oh hang on so you can't just press the button and the, and the mag drops out because you've got to kind of hold it but then after playing with it that makes perfect sense because you've got to switch them over so to do that you switch them over done do that done do that done it's it makes sense on the field rails you know we all like rails uh, oh, one thing from, from a YouTuber's point of view, from a video point of view, is the front part of this rail just clips, it, it's held on with retention clips, right? Now, I normally have my scope camera down here, my selfie camera here. Now, that, that, they both fit on the front rail. I can now take the whole rail off, removing both my cameras at the same time, ready for cleaning. Now, Planet Eclipse, I know, have not designed it for that purpose, but oh my goodness, that for me was just beautiful. Okay, now enough of uh, kind of polishing it. And ooh, ooh. Not every mark is perfect. Uh, granted, I've only used this for two months. That's why I'm not calling it a review because I believe that playing with a marker for a long period of time before formally reviewing it is uh, the way to go. And a couple of things that uh, prop popped up while talking to people about this marker. Um, one of them was that the majority of it is plastic or, or composite or whatever kind of, it's not metal. The majority of it is not metal, okay? You've got the, the main chamber that holds the bolt, that is metal. Um, you've got pops there that, oh, by the way, that, brilliant. Uh, the mag wheel's plastic, the mag's plastic, obviously the barrel's metal. And you know, that doesn't really bother me. You know, I'm coming from a TMC, a lot of the TMC is plastic as well. It doesn't really feel plastic when you're playing with it. Once you've got all the attachments on, it just makes it lighter. It's, you know, but I think if you want a real steel kind of T15 type thing, then you may be kind of, uh, feels a bit cheap, feels a bit plastic. So again, it could be something that you need to look into. So, got some gameplay footage for you here, where we played a zombie game, where the zombie was actually invincible. Now, when you shoot that zombie, the zombie doesn't die, so there's not real much point of shooting him, other than causing him enough pain to make him give up. But then, part way through doing that, I thought, hang on, if he doesn't give up, he's just going to absolutely blast me into oblivion. So, here's the gameplay of that little snippet for you, using the MG100.
Oh! You are infected. Rah, rah. Come on, Dad, you felt that bounce, Jelly? You felt that bounce? Player infected. Oh! <laughs> nice. So there you go. That's how first impressions works. I give you a look at something shiny, and I give you some pros, I give you some cons, I give you some opinions, uh, only my personal opinions, and you know, hearsay from what other people have said. I did loan the MG100 to a uh, yellow guy from the Vanguards who also had a go with it, and uh, he was suitably impressed, uh, especially coming from my previous recommendation of uh, him getting a TMC as well. It's like a kind of a, a summary of would I buy one? And for me, I've always been a very budget-minded paintballer. I mean, my mask cost 25 quid. It probably cost me more than that on all the bits I've added to it. But, you know, it's, it, I don't believe that you have to spend top dollar to get top performance kind of thing. I mean, you know, I've gone from, for a, a TMC as my main MagFed marker. I started off my MagFed journey with a, uh, with the Tipex. I then moved on to a Hammer 7. I had a TGR2, uh, and then I went on to the TMC. So it's, you know, I've used a lot of MagFed equipment before. A Planet Eclipse MagFed gun has always been a dream. I don't know how that dream appeared in my head, but it was there. At this time, I have no idea what the price of the mark is going to be. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like a thousand pounds or something like that, but the general consensus of uh, players that I spoke to have kind of placed it in between a high-end TMC and an entry-level T15. Um, I think if you go above the T15 mark, you're going to have a lot of drop-off with players wanting to the more realistic look, whereas I think if Planet Eclipse go in at the right level, I think these are going to sell like hotcakes. I think players have craved a marker that is efficient, easy to maintain, reliable, soft on paint. That's another thing that I haven't mentioned previously is how good this marker is on paint. Literally not a single break for, for two events. I mean, it's... I mean, my TMC, I've only broken five balls in over a year through that TMC, but this hasn't broken any in two events as yet, only using the Tomahawk white shelled clear filled paint, which is already very hard. But that's one thing I noticed actually, is that when I was shooting at people, it, looking back at the footage, it almost feels like the ball is gently pushed. It's pushed forward at, you know, it, it still goes the distance, but it's just, it's just pushed lightly towards the target and it just like impacts and it's just it's just lovely whereas the TMC goes Poof, like that and it kind of blasts the ball out I don't know I, it's, I, I don't know if that's a thing or if that's just me imagining it I don't know but that's what it felt like was happening I think they're gonna sell lots of this marker it's hard to find fault with this marker other than aesthetics in a milsim world which isn't really what paintball is. I mean, half of us running around in coloured pyjamas, so... I don't know, you know, at the end of the day, every paintball gun's going to fire a paintball the same way. It's it, They're all going to come out at a certain velocity, and they're all going to go to the target, and they're all going to hit a target, and, you know, it's it's just about, about how well they're going to get to that target. I think if you have never owned a mad-fed paintball gun, and you're coming from speedball, oh, my life. You will be in for a treat. You will love this. If you have a die dam, I think, and you have all the mags, I would buy this. Because every die dam I've seen in the team, um, it's always ended up being sold for various reasons. So I would buy this. Especially being that I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be cheaper than a die dam brand new. Uh, if you have a TMC, uh, like I do, 
and you had the funds to to upgrade maybe i don't know see that's the thing i love my dmc um it's it's always treated me well it's always worked it's always been accurate it's always just been amazing and it's loud and it has a kick and it just feels when you're using it this does all those things apart from it's not loud it's lovely and quiet it has no kick so it's just like it's like fine air so yeah i mean have you played with the planet eclipse mg100 have you seen one on your field what do you think of it uh, i'd love to know what you think and if you have if you're on the fence or if uh, a friend of yours or if a friend of yours is on a, on the fence as to whether or not to uh, to look into investing in a planet eclipse mg100 then feel free to uh, show them this video and see if my thoughts and opinions can uh, inform your decision as to whether or not you should buy one of these markers. I mean, there you go. You could be watching this video. If you're watching this video at the time of me actually releasing it, the MG100 may not be released yet. Or if you're watching this video in a year's time, you know, they're probably all over the field by now and you've probably felt one you've probably touched one you've probably you may have already fired one you may already own one i do not know but uh, i hope you enjoyed this uh video and i hope it was informative for you and helpful and uh thank you very much for watching oh and a big thank you to ledge from planet eclipse for uh loaning me this marker and entrusting me to give my unbiased opinion on something that I have dreamt about for a long time. Uh, so thanks very much and uh, I'll see you on the next video.